Hello, and welcome to Mitchell Consulting's webinar series for our Mitchell University. Today we're going to be working with SAP Business One, and we're going to talk about assigning licenses to the users. This webinar is being recorded. It'll be available on our website. So you can visit us at www.mitchellgroup.com to view this, plus our other webinars and our training series. For purpose of the demo today, we're going to be working with SAP Business One version 8.82. And one of the unique things about the SAP software is that the licenses are what's referred to as named licenses as opposed to concurrent. The difference being on most systems, if you purchase 10 licenses, you can have 10 people log on. It doesn't matter which 10 people log in as long as the first 10 people log on. When the 11th person tries to log on, um, they will get a message that they've exceeded your licenses. So for example, I can have a user named John and a user named Bill, and it doesn't really matter in a concurrent system who logs on. It just each one counts as a license. SAP is a little bit different. SAP, you can still create as many users as you want, but what you need to do is for that user John and that user Bill, you must assign a license. So if a license is not assigned to John, he can't log into the system. So let's look at that. And it's a unique concept of SAP. So we do what's known as named users. And how we assign that is from our license. So we're going to go into administration. And we're going to go into licenses. And we're going to look at the license administrator. Now again, this is controlled with authorizations. Not everybody can actually have access to this. Um, the super users and so on have access to this. So let's look at the screen and see how this is set up. You can see here our license server. Obviously, this is the server that SAP is running on. So you can look here. And the allocation side, you can see the company. So this is OEC Computers. And here are our users. Now, another important thing is that when you do have multiple companies, and you're going to have a person working in more than one company, when you create the user, you should use the same user or the same spelling. <laughs> this is important because in SAP, a user can log in two times on a database and only counts for one license. So for example, you can see I'm logged in as a manager here, and that's grayed out. So I actually have a license assigned to me, a professional user. I can log in as the manager a second time, it'll be OK. When I try to log in the manager as a third time, it's going to tell me that I've exceeded the number of times I can log in. This is important. We'll get into this later on, because when we get into the allocation part of the system when users have a lot of users here, and let's say they have a 25 professional users, and they've only got 24 assigned, and they can't find out why it is one missing. And we'll get into that in a few moments. But let's continue on here. So you can look here. This is the company that we're in, OEC Computers. This is the actual license number. Okay, this is a license coming from SAP. To import a new license, you would use the import license file here. Um, we typically do this, but again, you can do it. What we do is we would email you the license file. It's a text file. And you would install that in a directory. So let's say, for example, you were going to upgrade and purchase some more users. We would get the new license. You would select Import License File. And then you would just select your license file wherever you store it. And then what that will do is and everybody has to be off the system. That's why I'm not going to actually do it now, because we have to log everybody off. <laughs> and then what it will do is it will import the license. So here you can see, again, you can see the manager is grayed out. That just means the manager is logged in. I'm logged in as a manager. You can see that these are our licenses. You can see that the license, the manager has a professional user assigned to him, as well as some add-on components. If we look at Bill, Bill also has that set up. So if I was to take the, the professional user away from Bill, you would see it's available somewhere else. And I can give that to, say, Jim. This is how we assign it. So we would do that back and forth. So technically, what you can do, um, Let's say you have, in this case, let's look at how many licenses we have and how we want to assign them. So if I go to the other tab, the components, again, you can see my license here. Okay, You can see the localization. I'm using a global license, depending on your localization, the version. And you can see here some, 
some information. Here is the BI indirect. And this is for interfaces with other stuff. You can see that the total number of licenses is one, and the available is zero. That means it's been assigned. You can look at the start date and the expiration date. Again, we have some of these here which have to be assigned. The capability of licenses for add-ons. These licenses that come with the 9999s are needed for users who are going to actually work on that type of stuff. For example, an add-on in SAP is considered a third-party software that's created. Like, for example, here I'm using a product called Core Suites. Okay, down here, you can see it's running. So what it does is that I would have to then, if I want to use it, I have to assign it. So this is good because in the case of we have add-ons, like let's say SAP has an add-on for fixed assets. So what you want to do is you want to make sure when the fixed assets is running add-on, you only want, let's say, the people in accounting to work with fixed assets. So the users that are not involved with that, you would not give them access to the fixed asset module at all to prevent any issues of them getting into the uh, into the add-on, like fixed assets. You have the types of users. In this case, we have a professional user. Now, SAP has different types of users. A professional user has access to everything within SAP, which means he has access to sales and purchases and inventory and so on. There's some other types of licenses. There's what they call a limited CRM license, and there's a limited logistics license, and there's also a limited financial license. What those licenses are is they're actually, they're, they're, they cost less than a professional because they don't do everything in the system. So a CRM, a limited CRM license is for, say, a salesperson will allow me to enter quotes, enter sales orders, and, you know, that's about it, you know, do stuff related to that, look at the business partners, add business partners, and so on. But that CRM license is not going to let me do purchasing, not let me do receive merchandise. If I have a, it's not going to let me do some of the information in inventory. I can't do bill of materials. I can't run production with a CRM license. The inventory license would pick up that kind of stuff and so on. So depending on what you purchase, you'll see them in the system. This is the SAP add-on. And again, we talked about that. An add-on here, like um, the capability license for add-ons, is for setting up the add-ons. We have the B1i integration package. Again, this is for we want to integrate, we want to use um, other devices like iPads and so on. Again, you must assign the license. You have the software development kit, okay, the SDK implementation, and the SDK tools. This stuff is typically assigned to, if you have somebody who's actually going to work with SDK, the software development kit, and actually write code. So you would set those up. So we can see here that, in this case, we have this license, we have a license that's only for three professional users. And you can see there's nothing available. So if we go back to allocation, we would see it here. So my manager, you can see here that I have the professional on, and I have everything here. All right. If I go look at Bill, I have the same thing, and I have it for Sophie. So in the case of, let's say, Bill here and uh, Brad, you know, they're kind of, they don't, they're part-time. They work so and so, they're not on SAP all the time. So what I would do is I want to share the license. So what I would have to do is when Bill is logged off and Brad is logged off, as a manager, I would go in, I would just uncheck, so I'm taking the license away from Bill, I would go to Brad, and I would just do this. And you can see as I do that, they, the numbers go down. click update and when I click update what's going to happen it's going to just now take that license away from Bill and put it on to Brad. Now we talked about um, what we need to do is you need to make sure that the names are correct because remember we can have multiple companies within SAP. So we can have let's say two companies and we have certain people that are going to work in both. What we want to do is when we do create the users the users are stored in what's known as the SBO common database. That common database is referenced by all others. So typically what we would do is we would create the user bill, and then what we would do is we would just go into the company that Bill is going to work in and assign the users. The thing is, if we create bill in one company, and then we create, say, um, Billy in a second company, 
what's going to happen is SAP is going to treat those as two different users, and that's typically the problem. Typically what problems is a lot of our clients, when they've created users, they've typically used like the first name and the last um, little bit last length, like they had John Smith, so they may have a user called John. One company may have John S. The other company they may have Smith J. And if you do that, that's where the problem comes in. What happens is when people say, well, if I go into my company here and I actually count, so I go here and I say, okay, well, this is one, this is one, and I count as I go through, I count, say, 14, and I have a 15-user license. That's because you have, in that sense, you have a user called um, Jay Smith in one company using a license, and then you have the in the other company that you don't see, you have them as John, and you're doing the same thing. So um, in that case, what you'll do is you have to unselect or rename the, the person. So we're having a little bit of an issue here. Let me just cancel out of this server and go back in. But that's how we would actually assign users. Um, so to recap what we went over today, in SAP Business One is unique in the sense that every user must be assigned a license. Different from what's known as concurrent users, in a concurrent system, if you have 10 users, any 10 people can log in. So in this case, you know, the manager can log in and Bill and Sophie and Brad and Jim. It doesn't matter who logs in, but once 10 of them log in, the 11th person, so if the 11th person, let's say on this list was Linda, she won't be able to get in. In SAP, in order for Linda to get into the system, a Linda has to have a license assigned to her. So what we need to do is actually go in and do that license assignment within the system. Um, so what we do is we actually get our license, and this is typically done by us, the implementation side, but you can also do it. A lot of times with people, they're running on the system and they decide, you know what, I need to purchase more users. I hired some more people. So I want to buy an additional professional users. What we do is when the license comes in, we submit the license, and what we do is we'll go down here to import the license, and once we import the license, then what happens on our component side, we'll be able to go in and um, see that new user. So in this case, I have three professionals. If I was to purchase two more, I would say that now I have five professionals. So looking at this screen, I would see available two and I can reassign those two, and then update, and then Jim can log in and go 